Now, you're living in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I lived for about uh, six years before moving to Romania. Uh, and there you, you work with a lot of international business people, expats. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what type of work are you doing there? Yeah, basically, uh, I work with a company called LTC Language Solutions. And uh, I'm supposed to be an ESL teacher, uh, English language teacher, but my clients happen to be uh, middle-aged uh, executives at pharmaceutical companies uh, like Eli Lilly and Roche, and an agricultural company like Corteva, formerly Dow Agro. And so they, when they have their relocation package, they're allocated so many hours for language training, cultural training, assimilation into, into the country and the city they come into. So they fly into Indianapolis, they land as a family of four or six and don't know much. They each get uh, language hours. And as I said, so the, I typically, being 64 years old, I get the older guys and women. And I sit down with them like this once a week or twice a week for an hour or two. And the first thing I realize is your English is actually pretty good. You're, you're actually fluent. So you really, I'm not going to be able to help you much with your English. What I will help you with is your communication and your ability to understand the context you're placed in. And then it becomes uh, more of a sharing about uh, the different struggles they're going through. Uh, and a lot of it is leadership, uh, management. Each of these individuals is obviously the top of their game, otherwise they wouldn't get a, they wouldn't have the three-year assignment in Indianapolis uh, overseas assignment. They typically get that after 10 or 15 years of experience. Wow. And uh, that way they get to go to the headquarters, which yeah. is in, and in that headquarters like Eli Lilly, they get to meet and network. And during that time, I'm privileged to walk alongside them for a year or two. I just got back, I was telling Ryan I was here for 10 days and then I was in Istanbul. For three days this weekend, I just got back here in Romania, and I was meeting a former Turkish client there. I got to know he and his family for a two-year period of time, and I said, man, I'm only 70, I'm a 45-minute flight away from Istanbul, and they invited me to come any, any time, so uh, this is the second time I visited a family that I got to work with, and awesome. uh, she's an executive at Lilly, and he's a businessman, and I'm looking for business opportunities in, in, in Turkey, too. They have very similar needs, a developing country, young age people, a lot of talent, yep. uh, trying to connect the talent with the opportunity. Yep. Uh, so that's that's the joy of my job is I've got uh, people from all over the world. I've got Chinese, I've got Asians, Japanese, Brazilians, Europeans, Italians, uh, French. Uh, so it's a privilege to sit by people that are, you know, really have their act together. But what you realize is we all have issues. And once you get to know somebody and you're sitting in a scenario like this, you realize that uh, the issues they face are a little different than the issues that our, our people here are facing in Romania, but they're very similar too. They're all looking for that trust. They're all looking to be recognized. They're all looking to utilize their talent. And there's conflict. There's obviously uh, uh, problems and in, in work with uh, personnel issues and stuff. So it oftentimes turns into teachings on cultural intelligence and emotional intelligence. Uh, uh, getting into flow and, and what's it look like to be successful in your job, current job, mm -hmm. negotiating with your boss, negotiating with your uh, associates, and it becomes just a coaching situation. Again, where I say I'm walking alongside you for a period of time, you have to do all the work, but we can talk about your challenges, and guess what? Oh, your challenges are, I've done this now for five years, your challenges are the same challenges that this person from this country has. So it's a universal challenge of how do we how do we communicate, how do we link, how do we network, how do we survive and thrive in a culture that's different than our own. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a real joy. And to, to come to Romania all these years, I've learned a lot just because we've had to work with so many different cultures. Uh, and once you've done that, you kind of loosen your mindset and you're a little more open. You, you lose some of your assumptions, you're open-minded. Yeah. And you realize that you have a different way of thinking about uh, reality and I want to hear about that. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is I change as much as my client does. Yep. And I see the same thing when we're with, with, our, with our kids off the street and women off the street. As they grow, we're growing too. And they're challenging us and asking why we do certain things. And there's a pushback and a growth process. Yep. Uh, so it's always a two-way communication. It's always a two-way street where we're not just giving something. We're getting back. And that's probably the reason we're here 20 years, I think. And we're going to be here another 20 years is because we keep getting back and we keep having more people involved that want to, that want to participate and uh, so there's a cycle there and so it's real it's, it's fun I get to do this kind of thing back home with with people that seem to be real successful but have problems yeah and helping them be more successful and then bringing them alongside saying see what are you doing in Romania guess what I'm gonna show you a video yeah 
and you can visit and you can help. Awesome. You can visit, you can, you can donate. So uh, there's a broader message, and their companies are doing the same thing. So Eli Lilly has a, a philanthropic division, yep. Roche. Everybody's trying to do social good right. in their own community and, and across the world. So uh, the more we can tell people some of the needs that we see, uh, the more people will raise their hands and say, hey, I, I think I could help you there. Yeah. And that's what we see. Now we have, we have the Dutch deeply involved, we have the Norwegians deeply involved, and they continue to bless us. And, and uh, once somebody comes and sends a team to Romania, they fall in love with Romania. That's right. And they go back and tell other people about what they experienced here. Yep. And then we have, sometimes we have too many teams that want to come all at once. That's a good problem, I think, <laughs> where you have that energy and people. And so when we were building the four homes, for instance, I was here five years ago. We raised, my church, I think we raised, I don't know, 10,000 euros. It wasn't enough, but it was enough to get the foundation. Yep. And we had the drawings and everything. And... and we had five different cultures trying to lay out the, uh, the foundation by strings and, you know, they were measuring and we had a Dutch and we had an American, we had a Romanian, we had a Norwegian. Wow. And they're arguing for hours on how you lay out this, the foundation. And at the end of the day, everybody went home and the Dutch guy who lived, lived right next door, he came out and he laid it out the way he wanted it. And the next day, our team from America, we hand dug the foundation uh, and that was part of our outreach was we wanted to come donate some money and then donate our energy, and so what can we do? Oh, you guys can hand dig the foundation. So we spent four days hand digging. Wow. I get home, Marshall sends me a video of the concrete truck pouring the concrete, and then I come back the next year, and the frame is starting to go up. And I come back the next year, and Marshall's like, we're out of money. We start fundraising. I come back the next year, the roof's on. This is the fifth year I come back, it's finished. Why is it finished? Because the Norwegians came three times with different teams, or four, uh, forgive me Norwegians if I don't have this right, and the Dutch, they send teams down and they say, what can we do? Well, you can help do, you know, there's, if you have a team of 10 men or women, we have all kinds of things you can do. And so the last time the women came from Holland, they actually brought money. They brought their energy. They went to Ikea and furnished the four houses with Ikea through their donation. So when, once we see if Marshall saw this, he said, Steve, I can see we need, we need more property. We need more housing. Let's put it on the campus. We ran, of course, into all the problems you run into in Romania when you try to do something. It's, there's a lot of regulations. This can't be done. Yep. And uh, I, I saw Marshall many years ago, maybe 15 years ago. He went to the bank in Romania. He said, I need my 10,000 euros out in the next hour. And they said, this is not possible. And Marshall said, this is the new Romania. This is possible. I'm coming back in one hour. I want my 10,000 euros. So we go out and he goes to the store and we get some flowers. And we come back, and we come to the front of the, and he's got his flowers, and they've got his 10,000 euros. And I've watched this, I've just watched the system. They trust us now, and we've learned to trust them. And the bureaucracy is kind of melting. It's still strong, but it's melting in the sense where we can accomplish things now, where in the past, the first thing would have said would have been, this is not possible. Yeah. The new Romania, anything is possible. That's the spirit that you're seeing. Yeah. So it's so exciting now. I'm seeing the Romanians say this too. Anything is possible. Yeah. And you, you go from there and, and next thing you know you have a house built. It took five years, but that's okay. 